Hmm, that tin is melting. I don't think that this transistor will work anymore. Hello everyone and welcome to this ignorant video. During my free time I do a lot of experiments with electronics and to realize some of them I need something that generates a voltage. A voltage is very useful. You can easily remove insulation on thin wires to power up big arc lamps like this beautiful UVC emitting tube. Or cooking and melting things around you like this transistor. But this is not my first attempt to burn down my house. I mean, that's not the first time I build something that boosts its input voltage. This little inverter takes 12 to 18 volts and has a maximum output of 300 volts. There is only one problem. It's not enough powerful to melt metal or to shoot plasma on everything. Look, now all settings are at maximum. And if I short the output... Nothing happened. Nothing. So it's time to build a new one. More powerful. The first thing you need to find is a suitable transformer. Output voltage and current of your project mainly depends on it. Transformers only work with AC voltage. In my case, I need DC output. This requirement takes my attention to a particular type, the CRT TV's flyback transformers. My little friend right here has a very interesting feature. Inside the plastic case, there is a built-in high voltage diode that rectifies the AC current into DC1. But there is more. The ferrite core of the transformer is half submerged with the secondary in resin instead of the remaining half that is completely exposed outside the transformer. This means you can wind your own primary coil. That's a monstrous feature. Winding a few turns on it, you can trick the transformer and push it to its limit. Turning it into a fucking plasma flamethrower. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, now that we have a transformer, we need a driving circuit to power it up. On the internet, I see there are a lot of solutions, but I want to design a driver on my own because I want the power output of the driver to be adjustable. A decent efficiency. A decent efficiency. And also because just copying a circuit from internet is too boring. The main task of the driver is to create the alternate current for the transformer. Transformer. In this case, a 50 kHz square wave with a variable duty cycle value that will be proportional to the voltage applied to a specific input pin of the inverter, so you can electronically regulate the provided power. So I came up with this disaster, mainly consisting of an oscillator generating a 50 kHz triangle wave used by two comparators that generate the gate signals for the two MOSFETs of the half bridge, which drives the transformer. The comparator's reference levels change according to the voltage applied on the regulation pin. The circuit also prevents the two levels getting too much close in order to guarantee always a dead time to not cook the two MOSFETs. And lastly, to avoid malfunctions, these two transistors in combination with the zener disable the driver if there is not enough voltage to work correctly. At this point, many people will think, just stack a potentiometer to the regulation pin and the job is done. It should work, but I don't want to create a simple box that shoot random my voltage everywhere. I want something a little bit more precise and uh, possibly safer for the other appliances. For the other appliances. Two hours later. Ma porca puttana, te pareva. Guys, I think I broke the oscilloscope. Anyway. The first essential upgrade to increase the accuracy is a circuit on the output that measures in real time voltage and current. And here arrive the first problem. There aren't many components that can deal with voltages like 20 or more kilovolts. I need something that lower proportionally the voltage, like a giant resistive voltage divider. In this way, reading the output low voltage, it is possible to calculate the input higher voltage. At this point, you have to take two resistors and stack them on the flyback, right? Well, uh, yes, everything ok, until uh, you reach something like uh, 5 kilovolts. 
at this point the resistance of the ionized air is lower than the resistor one this means your voltage divider becomes a plasma light bulb and uh, trust me what do you read the output is no proportional anymore To cause the explosion of the resistor, there's not only the voltage jumping across it, also the power dissipation made a lot of damage. The solution I founded for both the problems is to make a chain of resistors in series and put them inside a flexible rubber tube, so I can also avoid discharges towards other components. When choosing resistor for the divider, remember to not choose too low value, otherwise you will waste too much current in the voltage divider. Looking at what I have in my storage, I opted for this solution. Do not influence too much the divider's ratio, I put a transistor impedance adapter immediately after it. The capacitor and the zener are very important. The first one exploiting the internal resistance of the divider create a low pass filter that clean the DC signal from all the mystical waveform generated by the voltage interferences. The second one clamps the voltage to a maximum safe value if something goes wrong. No fucking fighting! Good. Get the f For measuring current, the whole thing is simpler, just one resistor is needed. When current flows through a resistor, generate a voltage drop. The flyback can deliver at maximum 10 mA. And if I put a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series to it, you get minus 1 volt each mA of current. The voltage comes out negative because we are measuring from ground to the negative terminal of the transformer. The solution is an inverting emitter follower that mirrors the voltage one to one on the positive side. The capacitor zener couple is always present. For for the same reasons as before. Now that it's possible to read voltage and current at the same time, hopefully without starting a fireworks party on the circuit, there are two objectives to achieve. The first one, and the most important, is to establish a feedback that keeps stable voltage and current following variable reference values that you give to it. Using a true operational amplifier, respectively one for voltage and one for current, you can compare what your circuit read with a reference voltage. And finally, connecting the output of the amplifiers to the flyback driver using the regulation pin, the feedback is complete. The second objective is to display somewhere the measured values. To do this, I took two voltimeters with 10 volt range, and after changing their background scale, I connected and calibrated them using this circuit. Now, someone may be wondering, all this additional disaster of components only to make a potentiometer a little bit more precise? Well, connecting a potentiometer is not the only thing you can do with this circuit. If you implement a diverter switch and an external connector on the front panel, you can control voltage and current values using other electronic devices, for example with another power supply or a microcontroller. With the last one, it is also possible using its analog inputs and adding two op amps to read real-time measurements. In my case, I didn't use diverter switch. I used a circuit that always compare both values and give to the power supply the lower of the two for safety reasons. In almost all these electrical diagrams, capacitor zener couple is always present. Oh. Yo, Magical.
only two mandatory parts are missing. I want the entire device to work with 220 volts AC lines, but the actual project requires two different DC voltages lines, a 28 volt line for logic electronics and a 18 volt one to power up the driver that requires at least 80 watts. Fortunately, the inverter doesn't require a too much clean DC voltage, so I simply use a 100 volt ampere transformer in combination with a full bridge rectifier and some capacitors. The other components you see on the circuit make up a voltage booster that generate the 28 volt DC line. To prevent explosions born from short circuits, protection fuses are always present. We finally get to the last part of this ignorant video, dedicated to the most sneaky component of the entire project, the voltage cable and its connectors. To have a good high voltage cable is very important, when the voltage power supply is the only device on the table and nothing important or expensive is nearby, you can rest assured and just use normal cables. At worst, you will burn a little bit the insulation of the wire or the table. But when other devices are involved, especially delicate ones like oscilloscopes, using normal cables, it's too risky. I want a cable that you can handle and put wherever you want without having to worry about it. I already have some cables designed to carry a voltage with a very thick and high temperature resistant insulation that at the first look seems pretty safe. But what if one day a crack appears in the insulation layer? My oscilloscope knows the answer. To prevent insulation fails, letting the voltage destroying things all around the cable, an emergency path to the ground for the current is needed. Once established these key points, I started designing a cable. For the core of the cable, where the voltage flows, I choose a normal 0.5mm square cable. Then I put it inside two rubber pipes. After doing this, the entire thing goes into another pipe but made of aluminium. This is not exactly a pipe, it's uh, more or less a long aluminium spring. And uh, yes, it comes from a shower. This aluminium layer around the cable cable will be the emergency return way for the current in case of a voltage leaks. You can also grab the cable with your hands without being electrocuted. The resistors array on the tip of the cable guarantees a stable current flow. Without them, the parasitic capacitance of the wire would create a series of strong discharges with very high current peaks, turning the entire thing into a fucking EMP machine gun. Very dangerous for nearby electrical devices. Yeah, boy. Once the cable is done, you have to connect it to the power supply, so proper high voltage connectors are needed. I started by creating the one mounted on the device. This is the most critical of the two, because it can be always under high voltage. Also when nothing is plugged in, with the risk of delivering high voltage to everything in front of the device. To stop electric arcs jumping out from the connector, the positive terminal is positioned at the bottom of a rigid plastic pipe. The second connector is a bit easier to design, because it's supposed to be under high voltage only when plugged in the first one. For safety, like in the cable, also connectors have an external grounded layer. But you're never gonna be me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me after mounting everything inside a box, the project is complete. And after a while, turn it out to be more useful than I thought. In addition to remove insulation from cable and light up high voltage lamps, I used it to repair a necklace, scratching the surface and soldering with tin the broken thin chain. Focus, no guessing, just hold an obsession. I'll in this possession. You got the retention, I'll leave an impression and take a redemption. Just kill the discretion. Your mind is a
weapon 11-11 is time for progression on To melt small amount of metal So he's been looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem We could change the world, change times, rearrange them Staying on pace, running the race Life is a chase, I don't want a place I want to be first, work till it hurts Dehydrated thirst till I'm in a hearse oh. Or to rapidly remove the annoying insulation layer on very thin wires. The entire scheme should look like something like this. Probably this ignorant plasma shooting machine will appear in other of my videos to drop the correct amount of ignorance and plasma and uh, probably to destroy another oscilloscope. High voltage can be the main character of a lot of interesting and funny experiments, but it is also very dangerous. Always remember to be properly isolated, to have a suitable grounding net and to know what you are doing. Forget about one of these rules and one day you may win an expensive stone with your autograph. For this video it's all, I hope you liked it. In this case I wait you in the next one.